Have you ever wondered how to work with collections in C++? Well, they're called arrays, and that's what we're going to tackle today. Wazoo here, back with another episode in our crash course in C++. And today, we'll be talking about arrays. Let's get going. So arrays in C++ are it's easier to think of them as a collection of items that you want to work with. So they're very useful when we want to work with a bunch of the same thing. So for example, students registered in a class or perhaps books in a bookstore. That's the other common example. In C++, the, the big giveaway that, we're, that you're working with an array is the square brackets the open and close square brackets. Those are used to, to denote that you're working within an array. We reference or point to a specific item by using its index into the array. So the index is kind of like its position within the array. Uh, we'll go through a few examples. Maybe that'll help clear that up. Okay, so here we have a zero as the first item in our array. So the zero in this example is the index, which is which just happens to be the first item in an array. C, in C and C++ and most languages, arrays work in a zero-based fashion. So the, the starting index is always zero. Okay, and so again moving on, a one in our bracket open and close bracket with a 1 is the second item in the array. So the index in this case is 1. Okay, so we'll talk next about how to declare an array and how to work with all the elements in the array. So each each item within the array. So first we declare an array with the data type we're working with, a name, and then the total size. So how many total elements there are in that array. And that's important. We have to do that up front. So for an example, let's say we want to keep track of 10 numbers. So here we declare int as our data type, uh, numbers as the name of the array, and 10 is the total number, the total size of elements we are storing in that array, in that collection. Here's another example when you're working with money which has um, or anything with with a point value like 1.5 measurements for example so here we have double double is the data type to use for that in C++ and so we declare double and then the name of the array so in, in this case account and then how many total items we're storing in that array so in this case 20 so we then use the equal sign to assign a variable to a specific array index. Okay, let's go through an example. So here, numbers, we're, we're going back to our numbers example. Numbers with an index of 3, we want to assign it 10. Now don't forget that C++ works, with a, works as a zero-based index, or zero-based fashion, not index. So when we're saying numbers three, that's actually the fourth position, the fourth item in that numbers array. Okay, let's do another example. Okay, let's look at our account, account array of doubles. Okay, so account at an, the account item at index two, we're going to be assigning it 20.5. So remember, we're working with a zero-based array, so index 2 is actually the third element in that list, the third thing in that list of account numbers. So just a reminder, the index always starts at 0. Here we are in Visual Studio 2019 Community Edition and we are going to set up some basic arrays. Okay, so first you might recognize our output line, welcome to Hello Array. And I just, I just created a basic CMake project as I've done in the input and output videos in this series so far. So first, 
let's work with an array of integers. Array of integers. So we're declaring our array with an int, numbers, and let's say 10, just like we had in the slide. So numbers is the name of our name of our array. 10 is the maximum number of elements that we're using in that array. So for example, we can now declare numbers, the first item in the array, so index zero, let's say is four. And then we also want to declare the last item in the array. And let's say it's 10. Okay, and then when we want to print out the contents of the array or print out what the, the index of the array, we can use our output. So index zero of numbers is, and then we'll just use numbers zero. Okay, pretty straightforward. Same thing with the last one, index nine. So the last element, so last, oops, element in numbers is, and we'll declare numbers nine. Okay, so let's give that a roll and see what we get. Bit. So here we go. Welcome to Hello Array. Index zero of numbers is four, and the last element in numbers is 10. Okay, cool. Okay, so let's go through another way. We can, uh, C lets you um, initialize your array somewhat with the, um, with the declaration. So let's let's try again. So let's uh, let's try int more numbers, and let's just say uh, sorry. Let's just say two. We we can store a maximum of two numbers in this next array. So what we can do is actually right away with squiggly brackets define the two numbers that are in in this array. So one two for example. Okay, and then let's see what happens. So index zero of more numbers is more numbers zero. Oops, oops, keep doing that. End of line. Okay, and then the index one. So the last index of more numbers is more numbers one. So this can come in really handy uh, when you come across uh, use cases where you already know beforehand what you're going to be storing. Um, sometimes it really depends on the program you're writing. Maybe for an example, um, if you're writing like a, um, a shopping list or uh, a spreadsheet that someone might use to keep track of their money, that you don't know up front when you're writing the software what kind of money you're working with or what kind of things you want to buy at the grocery market. So this is, but there's, there's other examples where you will know the numbers up front of wh what you're working with. Um, so this is, an, this is a case of where you can, you can kind of declare everything right up front. So let's go ahead and run this. Blow that up a bit. And here we are, welcome to Hello Array. The index of zero of numbers is four. Yeah, we already know this. Last index in numbers is 10. Index zero, so the first element in the more numbers array is one. And the last element, index one of more numbers is two. Okay. Easy peasy, right? Okay. Um, let's go through some more examples. That's the only way to learn this. Okay. So let's do, uh, let's keep track of some money, for example. Okay, so we've got money. We're declaring a, an array of two elements called money, which is tracking doubles. Okay, so let's see, money zero, 
the first item in our money array. Let's give it 10.5. Um, well, you know what? We had a really good month. Let's say 1,000. 1,050. Why not? And then the last element in our money array, let's say, um, oh, I don't know. Uh, let's say that's maybe the first element is January and the last this this index we're working with is something like February. February is usually a tougher month. Let's say 500. Okay, so now again, we can see out with the same, we can output the same way we've done with our previous two index arrays. So let's say index zero of our money array is money zero. Okay. That sounds like it's gonna do the trick. Let's run it just to be sure. Okay, let's zoom in. Okay, here we go. Index zero of more numbers is one, which we already know. Index one of more numbers is two, which we know. And now index zero, so the first element of money is 1,000.5. Cool, okay. Let's see. So now let's talk about how to work with uh, some, sometimes you wanna work with a specific index within an array and then reassign it back to that same index. So let's say for an example, let's work with our money. Okay, so we have money zero is 1000.5 and let's say for example we want to uh, we made a mistake and we forgot that we want to multiply the the amount of money by by three but it should return it should then be stored the result of that of that equation should then be stored back into that first element index Okay, so here for example, we've got money, money zero equals money zero times, did I say 3,000? Three, I think I said three. Okay, so let's slowly go through this. We've got, we're taking the money, the element that's in the, the zero index of the money array we're multiplying that by three, let's say 3.5. We're multiplying that by 3.5, and then we're storing that result back into the first index of that money array. So now let's see what that becomes. So index zero of money is now money zero. And let's run this and see what we get. Okay, so index zero of money is 1,000.5. And now index zero of money is 3,501.75. Because we multiplied 1,000 by 3.5. Cool. So let's do the same thing with our numbers array. Okay, um, you know what? Let's do the same thing with our more numbers. Why not? So more numbers. Uh, why don't we? Why don't we take the sum of the first two indexes and then replace the first or replace the last index with that? Uh, I don't know why we would want to do that, but let's give it a shot. Okay, so more numbers. has two elements, so the last the last one in the array equals, okay, and let's say we wanna take the first index, so more numbers at index zero, and we wanna add it to more numbers of index one. And then once again, we wanna store the result back into more numbers index one. Okay, and then let's output that. So index one, of more numbers is now 
more numbers what? Okay, so here we go again. We've got our money, our two money examples. Okay, money 3,501 and 75 cents. And now index of one of more numbers is now three. Two plus one is three. Let's continue on and learn a bit about multi-dimensional arrays. So we've gone through what we call single dimension arrays. We have one, one set of square brackets, but now in C++, well, we always could. I don't mean it now, now. But now we're learning about multi-dimensional arrays. So arrays can have more than one dimension. So for example, we could have 20 students in a class and 10 classes in that school. So here we have a declaration of a multi-dimensional array. We've got double as our data type, grades as the name of our multi-dimensional array, and then we've got two sets of brackets, a 10 and a 20. So 10 is for how many classes, and 20 is how many total students we have in each class. So the rules about working with arrays stay the same no matter how many dimensions you're working with. So grades, 0, 0, grades with an index of 0 and another index of 0, is the first, first student in the first class. Okay, here's another one. Grades two, a second index and a third index in that next dimension is 89.9. So this is the third student in the fourth class. Is it possible to have three dimensions? Another declaration here, same, same grades format of doubles. We've got 10, 20, and 30. So 10 could be the number of classes, 20 could be the number of students in each class, and 30 could be the number of schools that we're keeping track of all together. So let's work with some code about with multi-dimensional arrays and see what we can do. Let's go through an example. So let's say we've got, um, we're gonna use a type, a data type of integer, and we're just gonna call it stuff and we're going to define it as a two by two array so for an example if you want to think about it we we have a zero zero a zero one a one zero and a one one in terms of indexes in possible indexes into this stuff array so that means that in a two by two multi-dimensional array we can store four elements total. So usually you just multiply the dimensions. So two times two, four. Um, let's, let, let's keep working through it. Maybe it'll, it'll help make sense. So stuff at, the first element of stuff is at position zero, zero. So let's just give that a one. Okay, and then stuff at the, the, the first the first dimension in the second index, well, index of one, is two. And let's do stuff one at, at index zero, index one and index zero, and then finally stuff one, one. And that's the last item in the array. So we've got at index zero, zero, we've got one, at index zero one, we've got two. At index one zero, we've got three. And finally, at index one one, we've got four. Okay. So outputting it is the same. Um, I okay. Let's let's do a simple output. So uh, let's say uh, position zero one is and let's call it stuff zero zero one okay and then end line presto 
and let's run this. Okay, so position zero one is two. Thanks everyone for tuning into this episode of Crash Course in C++ Learning About Arrays. My name is Wazoo. If you liked what you saw, give it a like. It'll help the YouTube algorithm expose this video to more, more people. And have yourself a great morning, evening, or good night. Bye.